Gopi. Oh, oh, Gopi, Gopi, Gopi. Can you drink some more food just out the back? Oh, oh,
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of God the Father, the love of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. We welcome you, dear friends, to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. In a special way today, we pray for and honor those mothers out there, those women who have lived sacrificial lives. We ask the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary for all of you this day, that the Lord, through her intercession, may give you peace and joy. Brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison.
Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in a daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve a table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task. Whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased in greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to our faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, for those who without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word as in their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John Jesus said to his disciples do not let your hearts be troubled you have faith in God have faith also in me in my father's house there are many dwelling places if there were not would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and still you do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father. Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks again for joining the Lord today, whether it's through the radio or through the Internet. 
It's hard to believe that we find ourselves in May. It looks, though, that things are beginning to change and will be changing soon as things begin to open up and opportunities begin to avail themselves again. To let you know that shortly we will reveal our plan for St. Monica and St. Blaise, so that whenever the restrictions are lifted, you can know what will happen when. For example, when First Communions will be, when our graduation ceremonies will be for everything from preschool through high school, when the RCIA folks will be able to come into the church, and all the other things that we had had planned, you'll know that whenever we get the green light, week one, week two, week three, when those things will happen. Additionally, you'll also find out when we will have huge reopening parties with food, fellowship, prayer, and bouncy houses. Also to share with you, we have three scholarship opportunities for our students graduating from high school. The information's online. We invite you to have your young person sign up as monies are available through three different ways. And the last thing, on Tuesday night, we're having a Jesus parade in Midland. The parade is to celebrate that Jesus is alive. So we'll be processing through the streets of Midland with our truck, with holy water, with holy songs, driving up and down the streets. The parade will start at seven o'clock, so we invite you to come outside into your front yard, listen for the music, and the joy and the love of Jesus will drive by and hit you with some holy water. So that's Tuesday night. So it's Mother's Day, an opportunity to thank God for our mothers, living or deceased, an opportunity for you men to thank God for your wives, because let's be honest, you have no idea how to raise children. It's an opportunity for us to recall the great gifts that God has given to us through our moms and also our dads. But for those of you who have experienced pain or hurt in your family, it's also an opportunity for some healing and some forgiveness. So often when I meet with people and counsel people, many of the things that trouble them as adults are things that happened to them when they were children. And often, what happens as we are kids, if it's not processed properly, we will grow up and we will misunderstand our parents. We will misunderstand what happened when we were young. But for many of us, as we've grown up, as we've matured, and as we've forgiven, we realize that our moms and our dads often were doing the best that they could with what they had. And for many of you, as you're raising your own children, you've realized wow, I probably should have been kinder to my own mother, and now that I'm mature and responsible for my own children, I rely on that wisdom that my mom or dad had given to me to try to pass on to my own kids. Or, if you feel that your home is a total train wreck, and there's no order and there's no peace, which, after all these weeks, will be very evident, maybe it's an opportunity to return back to those lessons that you learned from your folks or from her grandparents. But I'd like to talk about these misunderstandings that we have when we grow up. That when we look back to our moms or our dads, if we've not done the work to mature or to forgive, often memories, perhaps very distant, or misunderstandings from when we were very small and knew very little about life, often those can develop into hurts or wounds unnecessarily, and we can bring those into adulthood, and then it makes us think poorly about our mother, our father, or sadly for many of our young people today, because of a lack of maturity or forgiveness, they don't want to get married, and they never want to have children. These misunderstandings, that if we don't deal with them, can grow and fester and cause more problems now. Dear friends, these misunderstandings about our moms and our dads extend outside of the home and into our very understanding of who God is. So I'd like to use that image of our moms with us to help us understand our image of God the Father. Firstly, 
in the marriage of a man and a woman is to be modeled for us that union of Christ and the church. So the responsibility of husbands and wives in their sacrament of marriage is to model the sacrificial, selfless love that Christ has for the church, laying down his life for her and the church cooperating and being under the mission of the Savior. For husbands and wives, that great commission then is to be fruitful and multiply from the Lord, and that this husband and wife joined with Christ, not just the two becoming one, but the three with God becoming one, that in a very real way, the husband and wife are to model the love of the Trinity, the sacrificial love of Christ the Father and the Son for their children, to be the very face and presence of God for them. It can be a lot of pressure, but it also can be a great blessing, the opportunity to teach our children the truth of God through the truth of our own life. A lot of people have the wrong idea about God the Father, and they've gotten it from a lot of things of life. Sometimes the poor experiences we had at home, we then project that onto our relationship with God. Often the poor relationship that people have had with their own dad, they reflect that onto their relationship with God the Father, either consciously or subconsciously. Or perhaps, sadly, you had a bad experience with a religious sister or with a priest or with someone in the church that in fact conveyed the wrong message of who Christ is. Now this hasn't been true for my generation and for the younger folks, but for those of you who are most old, our senior folks, often sadly the encounters that you had, most especially with sisters, not always, but often, gave you the wrong idea about God the Father. What are some of those wrong ideas about the Father that it's time for us to be mature about and it's time for us to forgive, just as we must do the same thing as we reflect back on our moms and dads? One of the immature beliefs about God that many people have is that God is mean, God is cruel, God is waiting to strike us dead, that God's greatest joy will be for everyone to go to hell. Now, those things are not true. But I encounter a lot of people who have those misunderstandings. They believe those lies, and there's all kinds of reasons why it's there. Dear friends, let's take an opportunity today to allow our relationship with our God to be healed, as perhaps many of us need the relationship with our own parents or mothers to be healed. Let us maturely and soberly look at who God really is compared to the broken, wounded ways that we might view Him or the false ways we believe He views us. So how do we know who God really is? How do we know what God really believes? How do we know how God really interacts with us? Dear friends, right here, John chapter 14. Our Lord Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. From now on, you know him, the Father, because you have seen me. Our Lord Jesus is the face, is the voice, is the manifestation of God the Father. So it is through the actions, the words, and the miracles of Jesus that we know the truth of who God the Father is and the truth of how He interacts with us in which way then we shall walk so that we may have life. So what are some of the true things of who God the Father is that Jesus reveals? Well, let's look at the fact. Is God mean and cruel? Is God waiting just to condemn us? Well, our Lord Jesus said last Sunday's Gospel in John 10.10, 10, I've come to give you life to give you life to the full, to give us a life not only here, but a life also in heaven. We know that as we hear in the 23rd Psalm, and our Lord Jesus reiterates that, that for the lost sheep, our Lord Jesus will leave the 99 to seek and to find the lost. 
We know that our Lord Jesus had profound solicitude for the poor, for the brokenhearted, for the sick, for the crippled, the afflicted. We hear today in the gospel, he said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God, have faith in me. Or when our Lord Jesus appeared to those frightened, cowardly apostles in the upper room, those who had betrayed him and abandoned him, those who were supposed to stand by him and yet completely neglected him, when Jesus found them frightened in the upper room, he said, peace be with you. When he encountered Thomas, who doubted, he said, Thomas, peace be with you. Place your hands and your fingers into my wounds. None of this, dear friends, sounds like a God who's out to get us. None of this sounds like a God who's there wagging his finger at you. None of this sounds like a father who hates you. For many of us who struggle with self-loathing, for many of us when we hear love your enemy, do good to those who hate you, and when we hear that, the first enemy we think of is ourself. The Lord Jesus wants to heal you by manifesting the truth of who the Father is, to counteract those lies. Now, is it true that sin is real, that sin wounds our relationship? Is it true that people go to heaven and the people that go to hell? Absolutely. Our Lord Jesus also said that I've come to fulfill the law. Our Lord Jesus says, if you love me, keep the commandments. So we must keep the commandments. God must be first. We must use His name reverently. We must worship at Holy Mass, hopefully soon. We must keep those commandments, or we shall be condemned of our own actions. Our Lord Jesus, when He dealt with those who were unrepentant, most especially the scribes and the Pharisees, Jesus was always trying to save them. But because they ref refused to convert and be changed, He said, Woe to you. Woe to you. You see, there is a consequence for not changing. There is a consequence for being stiff-necked. There is a consequence for denying Him. Our Lord Jesus says, If you deny Me here on earth, I will deny you before My Father. Our Lord Jesus says, If you try to save your life in this life, you'll lose it. But if you lose it here, you'll save it. And we see that story about Lazarus and the rich man, how the rich man was condemned. Condemned, not for physically punching or hurting Lazarus, but condemned for neglecting the poor. Dear friends, our God is a good God and a just one. We know that He seeks and saves if we are willing to cooperate, if we are willing to be converted and change, seek and save us, the sinners. My great friend, St. Mary Magdalene, we see that example of a woman who had sinned in outrageously terrible ways to the point of her sin resulting in her being possessed. And our Lord Jesus says, sin no more. And we know that she's so radically transformed by that encounter of Christ, by choosing to turn away from sin, that she follows the Lord Jesus to the cross and beyond. I'm not sure, dear friends, what your image of God the Father is, or let alone the image you have of your own moms or your dads. But this is an opportunity for us when we're home and we have time and space to be mature people, to forgive, and to let go. If there's anything in you that has the wrong impression of who God is, pick up your Bible. Read the truth of who Jesus is. He says, no one goes to the Father except through me, because I am the way to live. I am the truth to set you free from the lies, and I am the life, life here on earth and life eternal. Let us allow, allow the truth of who Jesus is, reveal the truth of who the Father is, and so heal us and change us. Thank you so much for being part of the Holy Mass today. May the Lord bless you.
Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, we love you. Reveal your mercy to us. Receive now our prayers and our heartfelt petitions. For the leaders of the church, that they may be given wisdom and courage to speak the words of truth to a world overshadowed by a culture of death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For St. Monica and St. Blaise, that we may continue to support the good works to which we have committed ourselves in God's holy name, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Monica Catholic Academy, that God may increase our school and keep it faithful to his Eucharistic heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that the men and women of our parish will have the courage to follow the call of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have died and for those who have died unmourned and unloved, for the holy souls in purgatory and for those grieving the loss of someone dear to them, let us pray to the Lord. For the people of St. Monica and St. Blaise, for whom the holy sacrifice of the Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Let us take a moment to offer our prayers to the Lord. Eternal Father, in whom mercy is endless and a treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we may not despair nor become despondent. But with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. We ask these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all have risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ending, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, 
we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign, forever and ever. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hope you have a blessed week, a blessed Mother's Day. If you need help or if you'd like to help, please feel free to reach out to us. The Lord be with you. May the blessing, the peace, and the mercy of God be upon you in your hearts and in your homes, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ending.